stage he was looking for some kind of philosophy to adopt or religion to believe in. So he checked all possible, all available, accessible religions and philosophies from all over the world. And he said, I didn't find my heart in, in any of them. But Islam seemed to appeal to me and draw me in. So I started reading the translation of the Quran. And it appealed to me and I loved it. And it made so much sense to me. Then he said, I was some, somehow somewhere in the middle of the Quran. And when I was reciting it, I said, that makes full sense. But in order for me to believe, if Allah is really there and this is his word, he should give me a sign. So he basically, in his innocent, spontaneous way, he just turns and he addresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, if you are there, if these are your words, if Islam is the truth, give me a sign. Show me a sign, give me a miracle. Then he said, I sat down, it was almost midnight, summer night, in my house, I sat down and I was waiting for a miracle to happen. And he had a very simple conversation with like addressing or talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said in his, as I said, in his naive even style, he said, Oh Allah, I give you 20 minutes. Show me a sign in 20 minutes. So I could accept this as the truth. So the 20 minutes, when they passed, they were over. So in the last minute, he said, Oh Allah, you only have 30 seconds. Give me a sign, give me a miracle before time runs out. Then he says, there was no sign. I was sitting and wait for a sign. No sign showed up. Then I said, oh Allah, I gave you enough chance. That's not the religion. That's the, not the truth. That's not the religion for me to follow. And he said, I decided consciously to stop looking into Islam. And I moved on. He said, but there was something in my chest that was pulling me towards Islam, towards that book, the Quran that I left. So he said, two days later, at night as well, he said, I found myself drawn into the Quran. So he left a mark where he ended up, where he asked Allah for a sign. So he said, I decided to open the Quran. I decided to open the Quran and recite. I found myself drawn into it to read more. So he said, I started off where I left off last time. So I started reading. He said, the first verse that I came across was the verse that I recited at the beginning of the khutbah. They ask you for signs. They ask you for signs. But who guarantees that when they see signs that these people would believe? But the translator put a commentary and he said, basically what the verse says, that these people ask you for a sign and a miracle, but if they look around, they would see the miracles are already there. So he said, that blew me away. And I looked around and I saw everything around me as a miracle and a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, I, he said, I felt shy how I was trying to impose my own conditions, my own rules on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He realized how blind he had been. So he said, when I opened up my eyes, I saw so many signs. I said, my life is a sign. Everything about me is a sign. And then he became Muslim. So sometimes it's our arrogance, it's our pride that holds us back from seeing the signs, from making us better Muslims. So today I want to talk about one of the most important miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, has given humanity. It's a beautiful gift from Allah. It's a miracle in its own right. And it's a profound blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the prayer. That's the prayer that we take for granted. That we go through and perform and go through the motions so robotically, so unconsciously that we don't even feel it. We don't even feel it. It's become more of a routine, it's become more of a physical exercise that has no weight on us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about this beautiful miracle, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Indeed, indeed the salah, the prayer, is a deterrent. It's a tool to take you away from fahsha, from evil acts and lewdness. And from everything that is evil and despicable. So the Salah has this miraculous side and impact on human beings that it has the ability and it has the capacity to elevate your state and your morality and your behavior and your practice and elevate you as a person. That's what the prayer does. 
The prayer is a transformative tool, powerful tool to change us. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. The salah takes you away. It prevents you, holds you back, gives you another way other than lewdness and evil and sin. But why is it not paying off in the lives of so many Muslims who pray? Why? Let alone the Muslims who don't observe, observe the prayer. These people have missed the mark completely. They don't know what they're missing. They, they think the salah is a burden. They think salah is something that drags them out of the beauty of their life and is more of a heavy weight and constraint upon them. But salah has always been throughout the ages a liberating experience, a transcendental experience. It takes you away from the shackles of the earth and the body and it connects you to your soul and connects your soul to Allah. And this is why it's called salah. It comes from the Arabic world's word silah. And silah means a connection. Because all the acts of worship that you do, all of them, they are a means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are approaching Allah through a means. When you give sadaqah, it's through the money. When you're teaching people, you are dealing with people for the sake of Allah. There's a medium between you and Allah. When you are performing hajj, there are so many acts and there are so many interactions and rituals to observe. When you do righteousness, you're doing it through something. But with Salah, you, it's only Allah and you. It's just straight between you and Allah. It's a straight line between you and Allah. You are conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet says, إِذَا قَامَ الْعَبْدُ يُصَلِّ وَإِذَا قَامَ أَحَدُكُمْ يُصَلِّ فَإِنَّمَا يُنَاجِي رَبَّهُ that when one of you stands in the prayer, you are conversing with Allah privately. You're having a private conversation with Allah. You are speaking with Allah. And it's not only your tongue, it's your heart. And that's the only time the prayer has an impact on you and me. So when we pray the prayer, this miraculous act that we do not seem to appreciate is so profound and so powerful that it has the ability to elevate generations and nations to a higher moral standard, a higher spiritual standard, a higher behavioral practice. That's what, what the salah is supposed to be. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he talks about the prayer, he says, as salatu khayru mawdu'. He says, salah is the best subject to talk about. It's the best thing to think about. It's the salah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ would spend his time at night praying, standing up in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray. Because during the daytime, he had to deal with so many people. He had to run the affairs of his people. He had to settle disputes. He had to teach people. He had to engage in so many issues throughout the day. So he was kept busy. So in the night, he deprived himself of sleep because he needed that time with Allah. He needed to build himself, he needed that space where he's the only, the only thing or the only one in his life is Allah at that time. So he deals with Allah directly. And that gave him the growth, the spiritual growth, the personal growth, to grow as a leader who changed the history of humanity. Salah is not a joke. So the Prophet ﷺ would pray at night and Aisha anha, his wife, would miss him sometimes. So one night she expressed a need to be with him, spend time with him. Then he turns to her and he says, Ya Aisha, dharini ata'abbadu li Rabbi. Ya Aisha, leave me, let me to worship Allah. Let me spend some time with my Lord. Because that was a time for him to express his love for Allah, to pour his heart out to Allah. And forget about, you know, the physical constraints about life. To break from the shackles of the earth and embrace the spiritual aspect of who we are, where the heart connects to Allah, regardless, regardless of all physical constraints.